Today we're diving into 10 game-changing best practices that will transform your client relationships. Now I'm talking real life examples, practical advice, and insider secrets to help you become the client whisperer you've always dreamed of being. All right, heroes, let's kick things off with the cornerstone of great client relationships, becoming your client's trusted ally through deep understanding. Now, this isn't about strategy yet. We're gonna get into that in a minute. This is about truly getting to know your client's world inside and out. So let me share a quick story. I used to be a key account manager that had like a bunch of pharmaceutical clients, and they were about as interested in my product pitch as watching paint dry. So I switched gears. I immersed myself in their world. You know, I started studying their company history, their industry challenges, even things like their competitors, things like their clinical trials, their drug cycles, patents, you name it. I wanted to understand their perspective completely. And when I started speaking their language, well, guess what? They started listening. So here's your action plan to build trust through understanding. Study their business. You know, go beyond the basics, understand their operations, their challenges, and their goals. Learn their industry, become fluent in industry trends, regulations, market forces, that kind of thing. Understand their culture. Every company has its own way of doing things. Know their people, you know, understand the roles and the motivations of the key stakeholders. So remember, at this stage, you're not trying to solve problems or influence strategy. You're laying the groundwork by showing genuine interest and building deep knowledge. This kind of understanding is what's gonna allow you to build trust. So listen, have a little think. What is some area of your client's business that you could dive deeper into today? Next up, heroes, is becoming a proactive problem solver. This is where you really start to add value by anticipating your client's needs before they even mention them. So let me share a story that illustrates this perfectly. I had a university client once that had access to great cost-saving opportunities through like this, uh, this group uh, purchasing contract kind of thing, <laughs> you know. Anyway, the catch was that they couldn't get the faculties to participate, you know, it was all like optional. So instead of waiting for them to figure it out, I jumped in with a solution. I offered to have my team handle the outreach for six months. We engaged with each faculty, we knocked on those doors, we explained the benefits, and we got them on board. And the result, it was a ton of money saved for the university, plus my business, or our business, wasn't mine, grew by 500%. So. Here's how you can become a proactive problem solver. Stay informed, keep up with your clients, industries and markets because those little trends can be gateways to conversations. Speaking of conversations, ask the right questions. Understand their goals, their pain points, their priorities. Think creatively, we're gonna talk about this in a minute, but, but don't stick to the same old, same old, right? Collaborate, you don't have to do this alone. Bring in colleagues or other departments to brainstorm solutions. Remember heroes, when you're a proactive problem solver, you're not just a vendor, you're a valuable partner that they can't do without. So listen, have a think, what is a client challenge that you potentially start solving today before they even ask. All right, next up in our list of top 10 best practices for key account managers is the art of communication. Now this is a secret source that can make or break client relationships. Now I'm not talking about bending over backwards to accommodate every little preference. It's about being smart and strategic with how you communicate. The key is to be alert to the channels and the modalities that work best for your client within what you can reasonably offer. So, you know, don't force them to read long emails if you know they would prefer a quick voicemail. But also don't feel pressured to completely overhaul your communication style for every client. So here is your communication mastery toolkit. Observe preferences. Notice how they communicate most effectively. Lean in where it makes sense. You know, adapt where you can without compromising your efficiency. Be consistent as well. You know, once you find what works, stick with it and listen actively. Really hear what they're saying, not just the words. And of course, be proactive. Keep them informed in ways that work for both of you. Remember, it's about finding that sweet spot between their preferences and your capabilities. You can't always do everything their way, but you can certainly try where it makes sense. So here's my challenge to you. Have a think about a small adjustment you could make to your communication style that could make a big difference for one of your clients. Next up, heroes, is to build your reputation on rock solid reliability. Now, this is your ticket to becoming the go to person your clients just can't live without. Now, reliability isn't just about meeting deadlines, it's also about consistently delivering on your promises and meeting, if not exceeding, expectations. Imagine you have a client with a critical project deadline. You set clear expectations, you provide regular updates, and then you deliver ahead of schedule. That's how you build a reputation for reliability. So here is your reliability toolkit. Set clear expectations, be upfront about what you can deliver and when. Under promise and over deliver. Always aim to exceed what you've committed to. Now this doesn't mean going above and beyond. This just means setting some realistic deadlines and commitments, or maybe even building in some buffer so that you're not going to be racing against the clock or doing things that you, you know, committing to things you can't possibly deliver in the time that you said you could deliver it or in the way that you said you could deliver it. Communicate proactively, keep clients informed about your progress and challenges, and of course, own up to your mistakes. If you make a slip up, which we all do, admit it and make it right. Remember here is when you're reliable, that means you're a partner your clients can always trust and count on, and that's a foundation for long-term success and growth. So think about what's one way that you could demonstrate rock solid reliability to a key client this week. All right, heroes, let's build on our communication mastery and talk about tailoring your entire approach to each 
each client. Now, this is about being flexible and adaptable in how you work. Let me share a quick story. I had a client who didn't want in-person reviews every quarter, even though that was our standard process. But instead of forcing our one size fits all approach, I adapted. We did annual and half yearly reviews in person and I sent email updates for the other quarters. The client loved this flexibility and it was no extra work for me. In fact, it was actually less work. So here's how you can tailor your approach. Ask about your client's preferences. Beyond communication, what works best for their processes? Be open to adjustments. Don't cling to rigid processes if they don't serve the client. Find that middle ground, right? You can balance their needs with what you can reasonably do. Add value where you can. Always look for small ways to customize your service. Remember, it's not about completely overhauling every process and everything you do for every client. It's about being open to adjustments that make sense for both of you. So have a think, what is one aspect of your work process that you could adjust to better serve a key client. All right, here is, let's talk about fostering innovation. Number six on our list of best practices. This is all about staying ahead of the curve and continually finding new ways to add value. Now, when I say innovation, I don't mean like just the big disruptive bold ideas. Sometimes it is the smallest tweaks that can make the biggest difference. Let me share another quick example. I had a client struggling with this clunky approval process that was causing delays. It was all paperwork and it was a mess. Anyway, instead of overhauling their entire system, we implemented a simple online approval tool. This small change streamlined the process and significantly boosted their efficiency. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? So here's how you can foster innovation in your approach. Stay curious. Always be learning about new trends and technologies in your field. Listen to pain points. Your client's frustrations are opportunities for innovation. Encourage creativity. Don't be afraid to suggest unconventional solutions and start small. Test those new ideas on a small scale before rolling them out widely. Remember, innovation is about solving problems and improving efficiency. And when you consistently bring fresh ideas to the table, you become an invaluable partner in your client's success. So have a think about what's one area of your service that you could introduce a, a tiny, small, innovative change to one of your clients for big rewards. Okay, this is the big one. We're talking about a leap from vendor to strategic advisor. Now for me, this is a two-step process that truly makes you indispensable to your clients. Think of it as a ladder. Level one is to earn trust, which we talked about at the beginning. Level two is where you move from trust to earning respect for your expertise. At level two, your advice isn't just welcome, it's actively sought after. Imagine being invited to help set the annual budget or meeting with the CEO to discuss industry trends as they update company policies. That's what being a strategic advisor looks like. So here's your roadmap to becoming a strategic advisor. Focus on the results. You want to drive outcomes, not just transactions. Offer new perspectives. I know I keep saying it, but it's such, such a key message I want to get across. Suggest solutions they might not have considered. Work as an equal. Lead, follow, and balance assertiveness with cooperation. You're up here. You have great advice set that's going to help anybody in that organization. So be confident and build wide relationships. Your goal is to find problem owners across the organization so you can help them. Remember, as an equal, you are sharing responsibility for achieving goals. All right, heroes, we have reached a crucial point, which is to never stop sharpening your skills. In the fast-paced world of key account management, standing still is the same as falling behind. Let me share with you a little personal story. At the ripe old age of uh, 41, I decided to earn my Bachelor of Business degree and I held down a full-time job as a key account manager at the same time. Now you might think like, Warwick, why would you bother at that age when you're already in your dream job? Well, it wasn't just about the degree. It was about pushing myself, about gaining new perspectives and bringing fresh insights to my clients. So it's never too late to learn. So here's your skill sharpening toolkit. Embrace continuous learning, attend uh, workshops, webinars, uh, industry conferences, stay tech savvy, keep up with the latest tools and technologies in your field, seek feedback, just regularly ask clients and colleagues, how can you improve? And cross-pollinate ideas. What's going on in other industries that you can borrow from? How can you apply those insights to your work? And speaking of continuous learning, I've got an exciting opportunity for you. If you're serious about leveling up your key account management skills and want to join a community of like-minded professionals, then I invite you to join me in the CAM Club. The CAM Club is more than just a membership. It's your ticket to ongoing growth, exclusive resources, and a network of top-tier key account managers. You have courses, you've got training, you've got guides, playbooks, templates, and even one-to-one -one coaching with me through our open office hours every Tuesday and Wednesday. So don't miss out on this chance to supercharge your career and deliver unparalleled value to your clients. So if you're ready to invest in yourself and your client's success, head on over to thecamclub.com and join the Cam Club today. Your future self and your clients will thank you. All right, so let's talk about a game changer, which is mastering your time to maximize client impact. In the world of key account management, time isn't just money, 
It's an opportunity. It's not about working longer hours. It's about working smarter and focusing on the high impact activities that truly move the needle for your clients. So let me share a story I am sure you can relate to. For years, I was a slave to my inbox, you know, constantly reacting to every single message that pinged in. But then I thought, you know, I gotta make a radical change. So I decided to check emails only at specific times, one hour in the morning, uh, another around lunch, and then a final hour in the late afternoon. I know what you're thinking, like, Warwick, what if my, what if my clients need me? Well, guess what? The world didn't end and clients and colleagues could still reach me. They just had to do it by phone or instant message if they really needed me. And the result was I was able to free up hours and hours each week for strategic thinking and high value client work. It was a game changer. So here is your time mastery toolkit. Prioritize ruthlessly. Focus on those tasks that have a direct impact to client outcomes. Batch similar tasks, so group administrative work to minimize context switching. Use the 80-20 rule. Identify the 20% of activities that drive 80% of your results and spend more time there. And schedule deep work. Block out time for focused, high impact client work and respect that time that you set for yourself. And of course, the obvious one, master your inbox. Set specific times for email and stick to them. Remember, it's not just about being busy. When you master your time, you're not just improving your efficiency, you're also dramatically increasing the value you bring to your clients and to your company. So think about one time-wasting habit that you can shed this week to free up more time for high impact client work. And finally, heroes, let's talk about measuring success and proving your value. This is your secret weapon to ensuring clients see and understand the benefits you're bringing to their business. It's not enough to do great work, you need to show it off. So let me share another quick story. I once had a skeptical client who just who didn't really believe that we were adding much value. They thought, you know, they kind of did everything themselves and we were just, you know, surplus. <laughs> But I started thinking, how can I show this evidence? So I thought, let me create a highlight slide showcasing our top achievements. Cost savings, increased efficiency, improved customer satisfaction scores, you name it. The result was that my visual summary turned my doubter into a believer. And that's what you want. Champions who can tell your story on your behalf when you're not around. So here's your toolkit for measuring success and proving your value. Define clear metrics. Establish KPIs that align with your client's goals. Track your impact. Monitor and document your efforts and results. Create visual summaries that work for me, so try using charts and graphs to present your achievements. Tie work to business outcomes. You want to connect your activities to the bottom line because sooner or later, somebody's going to care about you know, saving money or, or increasing the top line revenue. Remember, by showcasing your value, you're not just patting yourself on the back you're strengthening your relationship and reinforcing your role as a key partner in your client's success. And there you have it, heroes. We have covered 10 game-changing best practices that will transform your key account management skills. Now remember, key account management isn't just about maintaining relationships. It's about driving growth and becoming an integral part of your client success stories. So don't forget about the CAM Club we discussed earlier. It's your fast track to implementing these strategies and connecting with fellow CAM professionals. Head on over to thecamclub.com and join us. Your clients deserve the best and so do you. So remember, heroes, you have the power to transform your client relationships and skyrocket your career. So go out there and make it happen.